So I've delayed this project for far too long, and now it's finally out. Yes, it's the first episode of my Warhammer 40,000 iconography sessions. In this session, I will talk about the blatantly notorious for some obnoxious space marines. You know, if you get in the world of for Warhammer 40k, you will stumble upon these guys loads of times. It's probably the first thing you see. They're advertised everywhere. You can see them in the Games Workshop site simply because they represent 50% of the sales. So, where do you think they come from? I have a few ideas. First of all, they are fanatical. They are superhumans. They are basically knights in a science fiction setting which have awesome weapons that destroy everything and they have a f uh, you know loyalty and faith and everything they represent an old stereotype of uh, the good pious knight although uh, apart from resembling combat monks there are a few similarities with uh, a book which m some of you may know uh, it has been compared to Lord of the Rings it's like the science fiction Lord of the Rings, kind of. You know, um, uh, it's kind of difficult to picture something like that. It's called Dune by Frank Herbert, wrote in 1965. Why does it have something to do with the Space Marines? There are a group of fanatical legions, which are extremely deadly. These guys are known in the book as the Sardaukar. They, they kind of resemble the whole space marine ideal furthermore they are let's say um grouped in legions they respond to someone called the padisha emperor and they are part of an organization called a reign a rule called the imperium well that is not a ripoff for 40k on the on uh, 40k's part it's a it's a clever throwback and people who haven't read the book i don't think they're gonna get it i believe that you should read the book it's a good book i've read it recently it's a good book it's elaborate it's curious and it has some 40k isms so space marines resemble combat monks we put this there of course there are a few chapters um Many of them are, let's say, something that are randomly um, conjured up. And, uh, s however, many others, the codex-specific chapters, are, uh, let's say, inspired by more, more cultural points, more cultural uh, sources. Because if you haven't figured out, the great thing about Warhammer is the fluff. The fluff makes everything worthwhile in Warhammer 40k. It is the most elaborate pseudo culture I have ever seen for fiction, for movies, for books, for video games, for tabletop games. It is a pseudo culture. It is extremely, extremely detailed and very interesting. That's what gets me into this game not the fact that it that it just looks cool i mean it's a, it's a secondary point a cool factor at least for me i don't know for you guys i'll start with the other chapters black templars because they're my favorite dark angels space wolves and of course blood angels which have been released now recently Let's start with the Black Templars. Of course, they look like crusaders from the uh, 12th century crusades. They have uh, crosses, they're um, black and white, and they have, you know, the helmets resemble many of the ancient helmets that were manufactured in the era. In the era. For example, the Emperor's Champion, the Le Cruziarch, many things are very common for um, a parallelism with these two situations it's a sub chapter which is small but it has a lot it has a lot of flavor space wolves crazy 
Space Wolves. Yeah, you know, I really like the Space Wolves because they are incarnation of Nordic mythology. If you don't get, you know, what they they are like, it's a, it's it's weird. Okay. You know, in the fluff in the codex there is an episode in which there is a certain dude who fights a, the kraken spawn it's 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 um very 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 indicative of two things first of all the god thor arjak um stone hammer what whatever his name is he is a throwback to the god thor and uh, instead the um, instead the kraken spawn are a throwback they are inspired from the legendary serpent midgard although thor doesn't die from midgard's venom in this uh, let's say legend the space wolves of course come from nordic mythology vikings northmen and the like dark angels dark angels in my opinion look like dominican monks why because they were and the uh, jesuits these guys were militarized monks which were uh son the, which members were um sons of rich families they were taught the ways of religion and battle these guys are secretive and they all always have their purpose beyond the others the other purposes of let's say their alleged allies and has happened various times i i personally think dark angels are really cool however they lack particularization in the codex they look too much like normal marines in my opinion they're still cool though blood angels blood angels i find them difficult to associate to anything because I don't know, I don't want them to resemble, you know, satanic rites and the shaitan from uh, Arabic uh, culture. So I do not know exactly where they come from. They are blood crazed maniacs, so I don't know. They could be uh, emerging between, you know, I mean, vampires, uh, berserkers, uh, blood drinkers, uh, Vikings, uh, which uh, drank the. Oh, no, sorry. Um, um, um those uh peoples which uh um drank the blood of their victims uh mayans aztecs these guys however i cannot identify them as a cultural stereotype or a cultural identification uh module simply because i really don't know so i would like you guys to fill me in because it's curious i find them i find them really cool i find them extremely interesting for the whole madness thing and the fact that, for example, uh, they are they they become stronger by they are stronger because of this, but they are, are also insane. I find that really cool. And the last, and uh, you know, the stereotypical, the ultramarines. Hooray! Ultramarines, ultramarines have arrived. Okay, ultramarines, I believe, resemble very much the Roman Empire. Why? Simply because many of the iconography hints at the Roman Empire. For example, take, take for example, Cato Sicarius. First of all, his name, Cato, is an actual and an authentic Roman name. And it has been overused, very much used. And a few, man, a few important characters in the Roman history are this name. After all, he looks like a Roman centurion. His helm has a crest which resembles that of the Roman centurion. Marnius Calgar, I don't know how to identify him, but his name signifies something. I know that. It signifies something. There are a few similarities with the Roman Empire, of course. The order, the uh, let's say the codex, uh, which hints at the reform of Marius. And this is everything that i have conjured so far if you would like to add something feel free to do so there is a main misconception with iconography however some people think that the imperial eagle has been used by nazis it's not true the nazi eagle has only one head the imperial eagle however comes from first more recently austria and when i say that people think oh it's the same thing it isn't if you say to an Austrian that he is German, 
Um, it's like if you say to a Scotsman that he's English, he'll get pissed off. It actually comes from 16th century Russia. So, there you have it. First session. Next one, be Imperial Guard. That would be a little longer, I believe, because there's so much to cover. If you would like me to further this, uh, let's say, this presentation with more subjects about Space Marines, because this is a general, uh, it's a general review, tell me, I'll do one. It's easy. Thank you and goodbye.